All right, so it says that during the first five minutes, I can't do more than 2,500 RPM. The next hour has to be no more than 4,000 RPM. And the next, or the final 30 minutes, no more than 6,000 RPM. So I'm gonna just try to keep it close to, but not at exactly the limit they're asking about. And I'll go up and down, um, touching the limit and coming back to where the uh, manual suggests. So I wanna give you my first impression. Um, of what I noticed so far. I didn't go past 2500 RPM except for a quick blip to close to 3000 because I felt like there was too much water getting into the gunnels here. Um, I, I felt like the machine was kind of lopsided. Like I, I gotta now pull over and check to see if this thing is taking on any water. I, I know that the plugs in the back are closed and tight, so it shouldn't be taking on water. But if you look right here, there's plenty of water in this left gunnel, nothing in the right one. Now it is a bit of a choppy day because it's windy, but you know, when I was turning, I felt like the machine was ready to go, like it was ready to roll in a sense, and I was doing no more than four miles an hour. So I don't know if that's a, a normal thing or not, but let me just finish breaking this thing in and uh, let me see, you know, how, how it keeps going. Another thing I want to show you is watch this. When I take off, right, I'm not going to be going fast at all, and you see the nose of this machine. The nose of this machine is taking on like a lot of water. This so far is not a very dry ride at all. So I don't know. Like I, I really feel like this thing wants to like flip or roll. And again, I'm not going fast, so I don't know. Maybe at speed it's different, but this is not, this is nothing like my sea do. Actually, let me change my trim. That might be it. All right, let's share some thoughts. We're uh, f about 40 minutes, uh, 39 minutes into this um, this break-in period. I'm at currently the second stage where I can't go past 4,000 RPM um, for more than an hour. So I'm doing that and uh, it's a really, really comfortable ski. This is what I feel right now about it. It's a very, very comfortable ski. Um, obviously, I haven't been able to see what acceleration and all that stuff is like, but when you're turning the ski, to me, it feels kind of like you're, you're on an R1 with like a race tire, you know, those oval shaped tires and you just, you know, you give it the slightest bit of input and it leans into the corner. So I don't know how that's gonna be at low speeds. I already feel like this thing wants to kind of tip a little bit. Um, I don't know, compared to my, my Sea Dew Fish Pro that I had, it was a 2020 and um, it was, uh, it felt a little more stable, I guess. Maybe it was a little longer too. Maybe that has something to do with it, but it felt a little more stable, unless it's just been the fact that I haven't been on a ski for so long and I, I don't remember what it's like to be on one, but it feels a little tippy to me. Now, as the day progresses, let me see how else um, I feel about this and uh, I'll report back. All right, the one hour, 4,000 RPM segment of the break-in period is done. I hope you guys can hear me because this wind is picking up now. But I want to show you something else that I noticed. So this was totally full to the point where when I had the uh, nozzle inside of the, uh, the gas fill up, it was basically pouring out. So it's totally, totally full. I've been using this ski for right now one hour and five minutes, give or take two or three minutes for stopping and talking to the camera. But uh, I've noticed that I'm now missing two bars of fuel. And mind you, it has been flashing eco mode this whole time, as well as zero boost. I have not even hit boost yet. So I can only imagine how bad this thing is gonna be on gas when I'm in full power mode and I'm just pulling ass all day long. I don't even know if I'm gonna get a full day's, uh, day's uh, fuel out of this thing. So let's hope that we get at least eight hours worth of fuel in a moderate setting, I guess. Suck to have to find fuel. I'm used to my Sea-Doo, um, where, mind you, I didn't have it for long, I don't know too much about it, but I'm used to the Sea-Doo where I would literally be, you know, all day and never had to fill up. When guys were filling up, I was just sitting off to the sideline and just didn't need it. So, so far, very comfortable ski, leans into corners very well, terrible on gas as, as far as I can see. Um, and uh, as far as power is concerned, I don't know yet because I haven't I haven't juiced it really. But that little tiny bit that I actually did give it because I was trying to you know figure out 
uh, the throttle, trying to learn the throttle for the first time using it, it felt extremely like twitchy, like it has a crazy amount of power. So now the last segment of the break-in is uh, 30 minutes uh, at no more than 6,000 RPM. So let's get into that. Okay, break-in is finally officially done. Uh, the third round, I went about 46, 47 miles an hour, which was up to about 57, 5,800 RPM. I touched 6,000 and came back down. And I want to show you something, okay? Tell me if you think this is interesting as I do. What do you see right there? Yep. Half a tank of gas to break this thing in. I had zero hours when I got it. Um, but it did say um, when I checked the vehicle information that it went up to 72 miles an hour. So I don't know if this was done at the factory or if someone after or before I took delivery did that. But anyway, um, zero hours and this thing used half a tank of gas to break it in. So now I'm hoping that that changes a little bit. Maybe that was just like a break-in procedure to give it more fuel, I have no idea. But let's hope that that changes because that to me is terrible. I cannot get a full day out on the water with this ski. Um, granted, I don't go full power all the time, but you know, it's nice to know that this thing sips gas if it needed it to, but it doesn't. Even in eco mode, this thing was using gas. So plus to the, to the, the sea do for that actually. Um, so that's, that's a big negative for me um, so far. Uh, a positive is that once I was able to get past 4,000 RPM, this ski actually came alive, right? It handled so much better than it did at slow speed. It was obviously a, a lot faster. And mind you, I was only in LPO mode. So I guess it's low power mode. I don't know, low power output. I have no idea what this stands for, but I was only in LPO. So now, I'm gonna head back to the dock and get out of here. But before I do that, I'm gonna put this thing in every mode and see how it accelerates and how it goes. And I'll give you thoughts on that as well. So this video uh, is for people who are looking to, per to possibly purchase this ski um, or interested in it or never had a ski and, and wanna know a little bit about it. But this particular um, ski so far, I do like, but the negatives are big ones and with my track record of keeping vehicles i can tell you right now this one's not going to last long so with that said i'll enjoy it while i have it but i already know this thing because of the gas mileage is not going to be a keeper all right so i gotta tell you a couple of things about this ski that i i i'm thinking of just based on initial break-in period without actually really really using the damn thing first and foremost it's way too fast for me like i, I don't care what you say call me whatever you want it's way too fast for me. I don't need all this power. I don't even know I went for a supercharged ski. I would have been happy probably with an FX HO, okay? That that aside, okay, it's definitely a way more wet ride, okay? I put the ski back in the water just to help him get his boat that was floating away. And at low speed, the machine feels very tippy. I really almost felt like I could have rolled this thing and I was doing maybe two or three miles an hour. Second, I don't know if you could see down there, but there is a little bit of water in there. Now, I don't know how that got there, to be honest, because I was only breaking the thing in. I wasn't even riding it hard. I did notice, however, that at low speeds, this thing um, would get a lot of water over it, a lot. I think way more than usual. And I was trimmed up. So it was getting a lot of water in it. Now, when I open this, it's bone dry, which is good. So the water wasn't getting in here. Um, the deck is really low. like. The sponsons or, or whatever you want to call these things, the gunnels, excuse me, the gunnels are very, very low. So I feel like this is always going to have a lot of water in it. Now, if they design this thing like this, why didn't, just like Yamaha did, put a drain in the footwells? That would have been really, really nice. Um, so besides that and the terrible, terrible gas mileage, um, it's a good ski, but the negatives are negative to me. I mean, take a look at this. Okay, I'm going to show you. There's uh, one, two, three, four bars missing out of eight bars. So half a tank of gas just to break this thing in. So again, let's hope that changes. Um, but otherwise, fit and finish is very nice. Ski's very, very comfortable. Seat's very, very comfortable. Even at the, the furthest uh, back position, it feels a little close to the bars. But you can actually sit on this hump 
um, and it's only foam, so there's not like an actual piece of plastic there to stop you from sliding back. It's just that foam. So you can actually sit on that if you're tall and big like me. I'm like 6'2", 280. So uh, overall, ski is very, very nice. Like I said, handles pretty good. Actually, really good. Um, but I haven't really gotten on it hard. I only did, I think, 62 or 63 miles an hour, um, which is the fastest I've ever been on a ski, to be honest. But uh, again, overall, sound is very, very good quality. Um, you can actually hear it at 60 miles an hour, unlike the Sea-Doo, and I had their, their more expensive, um, what's it called, uh, sound system. Um, yeah, so again, just, uh, the negatives to me were gas mileage, kind of a wet ride, uh, hard to handle it at low speed, um, and I found it to be very, very tippy. So besides that... I think I give it like a 7.5 rating out of 10.